In this video, I want to talk about um, drawing from light, such as with the mice, and glass pens. Now, um, I'm not going to do like a comparison because I think it would go without saying that um, a Hunt Speedball Crow Quill pen is going to give you much more flexibility than these will. But I did this drawing of the mother mouse with um, this, this pen and this pen, um, and this one a little bit, but um, I was filling the tip with an eyedropper, so I decided to just use these two. Um, the, and this is about the glass pens. Some of them have different nib shapes, which will give you a different line thickness. So in that way, they can not only be compared to the crow quills, they can be compared to rapidographs. But anyway, I wanted to do a sketch of the mother mouse. Now this is not one of my better sketches, um, or one of my better pieces of work. But what it is, is a learning tool with how the glass pens work as compared to um, crow quill, rapidograph, um, any very finely pointed pen. Any of the metal nibs are going to have flexibility of some kind. These do not have flexibility. So here, normally, like on the white area of the stomach where I would make um, what looks to be a thick beginning of a line that thins out, it ends up being just a equal length line um, whereas the other one with a crow quill, if I did it with a little bit of pressure at the beginning of the line and then lifted the pen, it would really look more like hair. These look more like lines. But I did find I can stipple, um, I can do line work, I can stipple, I can, um, of course use them for handwriting. And it's a wonderful way of doing art. Now, the big advantage is that you can use any of the inks um, that you own with these pens. This, like, the reason this is a learning experience, normally, see, you see the directions the lines go in. With a crow quill or even a rapidograph, I would be using hand pressure to make the shading um, different weights of tone. And because this, these type of pens make one thickness of line, like down here, there happened to be too much ink on the pen. And that, that's not really how I draw. So doing this, or over here, the same thing happened. You have a little bit too much ink on the pen and you're going to end up with choppy looking lines. Whereas if I had used a crow quill, the whole thing would look finer. So that's the bad part. The good part is though, is that these pens are wonderful to work with. So if I were to only work with these pens, the glass pens for say a week or so, I would then be developing an alternative to, to flexibility in the nib. I would either be filling the nib differently with a different amount of ink, or I would be switching from maybe this one to that one, or that one to that one. In other words, they're just like any other pen. They're each going to have their own individuality. So if you do um, a glass pen drawing and you go, well, I don't like this pen. My drawings are better with another pen. It's true. Maybe. The point is mastering penmanship means not only mastering your handwriting, but mastering the use of whatever nib you have. So this little mouse um, was done in legal noodlers legal lapis ink. And I happen to have a bunch of these little glass tubes that I used to keep beads in, but I'm using them to keep small amount of ink in. And um, 
in this case, this particular nib doesn't fit in there. So it's not like you can totally get rid of your larger ink bottles. But I have about 20 of these, which gives me 20 decent colors of any kind of ink to um, keep. I, it's like a three inch square box that I have 20 little tubes of ink in. Um, and I can fill this one with an eyedropper instead of putting it in. So um, the whole hassle of having the mice show up in the house um, can be turned to an advantage. Um, you know, I've had injured animals, bluebirds, squirrels, uh, rabbits, but mainly because of the nature of their injury, I have called the professionals to come and pick them up and rehab them or heal them or put them down if they needed to be. So with these mice, I have the opportunity to use them as live models. And that's why I've been posting videos about it, because even if you can't see their details, you'll be able to see how they move, um, how they sit. And um, I know the videos aren't really high quality, but for me to get really high quality, I would have to be in their face. And I really don't want to do that because of the dangers. But what I will do um, is encourage you to use glass pens for artwork. Now, I had started with Sumi um, with the mice, and I don't think I'm done with mice yet and mice drawings. This is Jumper. This is done with a Sumi brush, a little bit of gouache on the ears and the eye highlight, um, but with Sumi brushes. So you don't have to work in glass pen. Um, but at the same time, something like this, because as soon as I saw it, I said, well, that's like how I used to draw many years ago. But what I'm doing is teaching myself the mastering of a different kind of tool. So don't say yuck and get rid of the pens. It's a learning experience. So what I think I'm going to do, I have made tracings of those. Well, I drew the original. I, I painted this with a brush. I did make a tracing of it. I drew this with a pencil by hand, and then I made a tracing of it. I think what I'm going to do is take this tracing and um, make a copy of it and put it on my blog. And if you want to try glass pens and line work, you, you'll be able to print this or, or download it or copy it um, and have an, an initial drawing so that you can practice pen work, um, any ink that you normally use.